Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. Guys, today I probably have the greatest story that we've ever told on this podcast or on a YouTube video. And it's going to be with my guy Brandon here. Brandon's got a pretty crazy story, but Brandon is super successful. So you may say, all right, crazy story, super successful. Most people never, um, people change and then they unchange. Okay, like, like that's the whole goal. Is the whole goal is that this channel was made for you to believe 95% of the world's lost is for you to believe that number one, you're capable, you have the potential to do it. And then hopefully I play a video one day in which you go, you know what? All right, that's going to be my story. I'm going to be the comeback kid. I'm going to overcome these obstacles. That guy can do it. I can do it too. And like, that's what this one's about today. And when you hear his story, it is extreme. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> By the way, super inspiring. Okay. It just shows that everyone who's watching this is qualified. And he has an amazing life now. He's super successful. If you met him, and I mean like met you, um, I spent the whole morning together. We cold plunged. We worked out together. We've been spending a lot of time together. Had breakfast. Now we're here. He's in my brotherhood. He's close to me. Um, dude, you would never guess his past. And so I want him to tell it. I want him to tell it. And I want you to you know, tell a little bit about what you're doing now. Yeah. But I want you to tell your past. Okay. Um, number one, you have a massive roofing company. You're, you're doing big shit. You make m multiple millions of dollars. Um, you know, I won't get into that unless you want to get into it. But like, he makes plenty of money, guys. It's, just, it's super badass. He's got a beautiful wife. They've got a great family. He has everything he needs. And he overcame the craziest crap. So, uh, Brandon, I want to yeah. tell you thank yeah. you. I appreciate you. Yeah. I would... I'm always like, everybody wants to start with like what you're doing now right. and they want to see the highlight reel mm -hmm. of like, but that's all shit. When guys like you are self-made and a lot of people here are about to become self-made or they're on the journey to become self-made now. I want you to tell your story because the things that you've overcame, the things that you've been through, you know, the story that you told me in the car, like I want that. I want all, I want the real, real, real Brandon. That's Everything, it. I want it all. Yeah. I want all the ugly, which by the way, Spending time with him, I just can't believe he's been through it. But then again, I can believe it because great people have always overcome the greatest struggles, the greatest tribulations and trials and obstacles. And that's why now you're so grateful for your life. You know what I mean? Super grateful. I love it. Yeah. All right, it's all you. I'm yeah. going to let you rip because I want to learn it all, and I've heard it, and I want to yeah. hear it again, and I want everyone watching this to know who the hell Brandon is. All right, let's go. Um, thanks again for having me on. You man. bet, man. I, I really appreciate it. We're going to change a lot of lives today. Awesome getting to hang with you this morning. Yeah, you know, it's like people look at my life today, and it's like, oh, must be nice. Must be nice. Or I, I could never do that. And it's like they don't have no idea, like, of where I come from, the pain, like, I went through, the struggle I went through, the pain I put myself through. You know, is uh, I mean, the first time I was incarcerated, I was 13 years old. Mm. You know, I, like... I spent a long time incarcerated and you know, I didn't just make a mistake and go to, go to prison. That wasn't the thing. Like I was a criminal, you know? And I first want to say is like, man, I can't fathom the man I was then today. You know, I, I can't, it, I can't even fathom it. Um, so, you know, as I was coming up, you know, I was just an angry guy, you know, my family split. Um, and I was just angry and, and I really didn't know, like, I, I was drawn to the wrong thing. And I don't know what exactly, what the reason was, attention, just where I found my identity. But in any case, that's what I was drawn to. And, you know, that's like, I was just hell bent on doing the wrong thing. And, you know, and, and I also realized, like, man, like, I like to party a little bit different than everybody else. Like, chemical dependency was definitely a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where, like, I found my identity. And I don't know... You know, like the, the, all the mental health stuff. I think everybody struggles with mental health to a point. Um, and, and a lot of people think it's just something like we're supposed to just wake up happy. We're just supposed to wake up fulfilled. We're supposed to wake up confident. That's just not the case. Mm -hmm. At least for me, it's not. Um, and, you know, like early on, it's like I, I was like that guy who just never felt like I fit in anywhere. You know, it's like it might look like, oh, he's with, the, you know, and with this cool group of kids or this cool group. But I didn't ever, I felt like I was always the outsider. Um, and, you know, it's like but. As I was coming up, um, you know, I got incarcerated a couple times, and you know, then I dropped out of school when I was uh, 15, 16 years old, and and I got in construction, and I moved in with my brother at that point. He's like, you know what, you're okay, you're gonna you're gonna pay half the bills, you know, is what you're gonna do, and and that lasted for a little while, but you know, I <laughs> he wasn't okay with me selling drugs, and that's what I was doing, um, so that didn't last long, and you know, it was like. 
there was never any, I, it was never like if I go to prison or any of the consequences, this is like just who I am. And I'm going to figure out how to do, I'm going to figure out how to do the wrong thing, like the really right way, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is like the one chance I got at being successful. You know, I remember at an early age, like my mom would take me to go play at these kids' houses on the other side of the track, so to speak. And, uh, it, and I would just look at like, you know, big, nice house, beautiful family. And from an early age, I just told myself like, that's just not for you. That's only for people like who grow up making all the right decisions, who go to college, who do like all these things. It's for anybody, it's just not for you. But the only way that you have a chance of actually getting there is uh, doing some criminal stuff. That's the only, that you'll even be able to get a little piece of that. Mm -hmm. There's a lie I told myself for so long, you know? And, and all of it, I, it was, I, I thought this was like really who I was. You know, um, and so as I was coming up, one thing I did, like I always had a good work ethic. Like I, I, once I started building houses, like I loved that. That was like the one part of my life that I could felt like was kind of like in con I was in control of, you know, it was just, I don't know, I would just get lost in the work. And it's like, all right, I might've did a bunch of like terrible shit today, but at least I went and did this, mm. you know? Um, and so, you know, I joined the Carpenters Union. I was a journeyman carpenter by the time I was 23, and I was living this double life. You know, I'm going to work, busting my ass all day, and I'm selling drugs, doing drugs, you know, the rest of the time. And it was, uh, there was no, like, tomorrow type of a thing. Um, and I was just so lost, like, just existing. You know, I, I, I didn't want to go around the people, like, I truly loved and that loved me. I was just ashamed, you know? Um, and I was just a, a, a shell of myself for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so long story short, I ended up getting incarcerated um, when I was 23. And, you know, I remember when I got incarcerated, it was like, it was never if I was get, gonna get incarcerated, it was always when, like, when's this gonna happen? And um, just accepting the consequences. And, you know, it was like, it was just always going to be a thing. And I remember like, as I was going, entering into that world, you know, it was like, okay, like, I'm going to figure like, who's got the power, who's got the money, like, who's got all this stuff. That's how I'm going to do my time. And so then that's what I set out to do. You know, um, that's how I did my time. And I ended up doing, you know, six and a half years in the hole. And that's a prison inside of a prison. And just like putting myself through all this fucking pain, you know, and, and, like chasing this version of myself that I like created in my mind that was never me to begin with. You know, it was just like mm -hmm. all alive from like Satan himself. And like, this is, this is the only shot you got at any significance is in this world type of a thing. And I used to be mad at God, man. Like, and I'm not going to get all religious on you. Don't worry. But, but God is, is a huge part of my story. And he is like the number one reason like that I'm here. Um, you know, but I was mad at him for a long time. And, you know, because people would ask me, well, Brandon, do you believe in God? And I was like, yeah, sure, I believe in God. But, you know, he doesn't believe in me. If he did, why would he make me this way? Why would he make this broken, you know, child mm -hmm. and through all this stuff? And I know the answer to that question today. Um, but so, you know, as I, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to, to come home and. Uh, how, much time, how much time did you do total? Ten yeah. years. Ten years? Yeah. yeah. How old were you when you got out? Thirty-four. Okay. Yeah. How old are you today? I'm 40. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So six years ago, yep. you get out and then talk to me. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. Yeah, so... Um 
six years ago I get out and you know it's like I got a, a I got a good foundation I'm coming home to got a super supportive family got a good job waiting on me and I remember I came home and the first like four weeks of my life was like just hell you know um I I went to work with my my brother like the next day you know he's he's got this construction company he's trying to get up and going and like I just like 48 hours after I came home I just got hit with this like 100 forms of anxiety and fear and I man I just started like broke down and started crying and I remember it was like what's up man are you okay and I'm like nah man I'm not like take me home and I what it was like I just needed to go around people I was comfortable around that I thought that's what I needed let me run to like what I know mm -hmm. and the people the type of people I've been around for the past decade essentially my whole life and, and that's what I did you know and you know the next four weeks was was followed like it was terrible man and it was you know like right back into selling drugs doing all this stuff mm -hmm. and it was like man like thinking that's who i was but god was showing me very quickly this isn't who you are this isn't where you belong and i got other plans for you and you know it was at the end of this 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 four weeks i remember like man i'm more broken than i've ever been in my life and when we talk about like people will say to me like well yeah no but that's that's crazy you know i i gotta i gotta you know i've hit bottoms but i've never been in prison or anything like that and it's like man that's just a physical place because the prison if i like left to my own devices that i'll put myself in here is way worse than any prison that the mm. state can put me in wow. you know way worse and i sat on this bench man i sat on this bench and i just remember sitting down and it was like the world came crashing down on me and it was like more pain than i've ever felt more broken than i've ever been and I just wanted the pain to stop, and I had no idea how to make it stop. And I, that was the point I just cried out to God, like, just please, just make it stop. And, you know, at that time, I, uh, you know, shortly after that, like, I, I went and tried to take my own life, you know. And um, by the grace of God, that didn't work. And, you know, they, when they paramedics brought me back, the very first words that were spoken to me was, Brandon, I'm supposed to tell you God's not done with you. He's got a plan for you. Very first words that were spoken to me. And like, I still, I hear those words every day, you know? Um, and so like from that point over, like the next couple of days, like a whirlwind, but you know, I got introduced, I, I started talking to this girl and you know, in that time, like that we went to school together and, you know, she's telling me about this wonderful life she has. And we partied together back in the day. And I could, it's clearly, she's not doing that now. And she's like, man, like, you don't have to do that stuff either. Like there's this whole other world out here and you could have this stuff too. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That worked for you, but you don't get it. Like, this is who I am. Like I would just, I was binding myself to my past. I was buying my own bullshit, you know, and, 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 and buying my own lies. And so, you know, I, I, and she's like, well, okay, well, if the pain never gets bad enough, just, I, I can introduce you to some people. And, you know, she, uh, so at that point in time, the pain was bad enough, you know? And so she introduced me to those people. And man, I just went all in on like setting this foundation and like rebuilding myself from the ground up, like first and foremost, spiritually, you know, setting that spiritual foundation, like learning how to live, like getting introduced to me. That was, that was like, one of the biggest things was like, I got introduced like to the real me, mm. you know, and, and learned how to, how to deal with life on life's terms, mm -hmm. you know, and not get rocked off my square by every little tiny thing that happens. Like a lot of people let themselves. And, 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 and let's be honest, like at the end of the day, it's life or death. Like I don't have a choice, you know, I, <laughs> I, I can't do the wrong thing the right way. I definitely can't do that. I can't even die. Right. Like this is the only other option. There's no other, there's no other plan B or anything. And so, you know, like I said, I just went all in on that. And, you know, in that time, um, I remember, you know, I'm working with a mentor and um, this is probably like, you know, four or five months later. And I wrote down all of these goals and targets I wanted. Like I wanted this car, I wanted this bank account, I wanted this house, I wanted all these things. And I went and showed them to him. And it maybe was 60 days after that. And he's like, yeah, you know, all that, that's all really cool stuff. He's like, but here's the deal. If you don't establish the truly priceless assets, the spiritual, mm -hmm. the emotional, the mental assets, the ones no one can take away from you, mm -hmm. you're going to die. But that stuff's cool too, though, you know? And uh, so I just put that stuff aside. And, and, but I remember 
by my calculations, all those things I'd written out, by my calculations, they're going to take me like five, five and a half years. I got a 300 credit score. I'm living at my mom's house. I don't have anything. Yeah, you said you bought your cell phone. Bought me a cell phone, you know? I mean, and everybody can put themselves in that position. Right. Thinking big at that point was like just a really long ways away. You were doing it. Right. But like, it's pretty, there's people that are in that same spot right now. Right. And then what happens? I remember when I, with that list I wrote down, by my calculations, it was going to take me about five, five and a half years. But when I just w was coachable and took the suggestions and focused on the truly priceless assets and truly building myself up, I had everything knocked off that list in 16 months. Mm. And, and that's when I really saw like the power of self-development work, you mm -hmm. know, and really like for anything to get better, I have to get better. Mm -hmm. And when I get better, everything around me is going to get better as a result, okay. you know. Um, I, started the, I started the company a few months after that. You know, I was I, I went straight back to work in the union. I realized, like, man, this isn't like where I belong. I'm working 60, 65 hours a week every day, I po every hour I possibly can. And I'm just realizing, like, man, like this isn't where I belong. I just always felt called for something more. And um, everybody, a lot of people told me I was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, man, no one's going to trust you. Are you crazy? Like you terrorized for this community for half your life. Like you, like you should be thankful for that, you know. $30 an hour job like that. And that's, and I was, it's a, it was a great job. Mm -hmm. It just, it, I wasn't called to do it. And, but you know, I had, um, I, everybody told me I was crazy, uh, except my, my girlfriend then at the time wife now. Mm -hmm. And she's like, man, let's go. I believe in you. <sighs> and, and that's really what I needed, you know, at that time was somebody to believe in me. And, um, it was just crazy, you know, like how fast, like, and here's the deal. Like, I think people like I'm coming from nothing, like literally, literally nothing. Mm -hmm. And, and so like, it didn't matter. Like you'll pay me to do it. I'm picking, I'm doing it, you know, cause I started out like the first like month, a mm -hmm. couple months I'm doing all type, you know, hundred dollar hour and a hundred dollar job, $300 job, all these little odd and end stuff, you know, like handyman type stuff. And I just kept going. Next thing you know, it's like, man, this is, just keeps picking up and keep picking up. And, and the next thing I landed a couple of big contracts, but that first year was me out in the field, like 12, 13, 14 hours a day, doing all the back end work myself at night. Mm -hmm. And again, like at the end of that year, it's like, man, this isn't like, this isn't it, you know? And, and I was hitting the ceiling. And I think a lot of people that come from the trades and start a company, like stay right there. And it's like, okay, make great money. It's just not like sustainable. You can't retire, mm -hmm. you know, no one else can retire. And so it was at that point in time, it was like, how do I drop this to the simplest form possible and actually build a brand and build a machine? And, and that's, so I dropped it to the residential roofing and, uh, you know, I didn't have any sales experience and have anything like that. Um, I just started watching online trainings, you know, started podcasting, just pouring myself in. It's like, this is why I realized the power of like who I'm surrounding myself with mm. and getting really intentional. You know, I had to cut these people out of my life. Like, Brian, you're doing too much. You need to relax. You're dreaming too big. That's not possible. And I really had to cut those people out. I had to yeah. shed those people from my life, you know? Um, yeah. When you're doing that, you're, those, a lot of people know when you decide to make a decision to, you know, go outside the boundaries of what the world's put on you, you know, you're yeah. going to, you're just, people are going to look at you like you're just lost your mind. A hundred percent. It's, uh, you know, and that, as I was going into that next year, you know, I was just knocking doors, you know, I'm knocking doors. And I remember I first knocked doors, it was February and we're in a storm market and it hadn't been a storm in a while. And I didn't get a deal for like the first like month mm -hmm. and I'm just keeping going. Like I got to make this work. There's no plan. that's burned the boats, you Most know, there's no plan quit. B. Yeah. A hundred percent. And and I just kept failing my way forward. And next thing you know, I'm getting a deal every 10 contacts, every eight contacts. And by the end of my like career out there, like I'm closing every person I talk to, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, you know, so in a couple of years, I was like, okay, this is great. Like I'm making more money I ever thought possible. I got three, four sales guys, maybe five, you know, but it's like, I'm trying to bring a lot of people with me I knew. And it's like, as we're going through this, you know, I, I have no choice but to live by this high standard. Like I don't have a choice. And, you know, it's like, 
I'm, I'm trying to implement that with everybody. He's like, Brandon, why do you care if I smoke weed every day? Why do you care if I drink four or five nights a week? Why do you care if I go to the gym? Mm -hmm. You know, why, why do you care if I sell this amount? And, and like, you're being unreasonable. And it used to make me question myself, like, am I being unreasonable? Mm -hmm. And I figured out the answer to that question was, no, I'm not being unreasonable. I'm just looking for it in the wrong people, mm -hmm. which was a huge thing for me. Huge. And, you know, it's so. Am I being unreasonable and, or am I looking for it in the wrong people? A hundred percent, man. And I was definitely looking for it in the wrong people. And it's not to say there's anything I'm better than them or that, that no, we're just on two different it. journeys. Yeah. You know, super important guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that bullshit. Yes, you are. I got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay. Every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. And so that was a, that was a, a really defining moment for me. And, you know, as I was going through, like, you know, now I'd, it, probably two and a half, three years in, um, like I said, I'm making more money than I ever thought possible. We just moved into a new building. Uh, you know, I'm doing two to three million a year myself in sales while doing, you know, trying to manage this thing, scale this thing, all, all the things. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, what's happened is I'm, and in my mind, I'm doing like, I'm leading by example. I'm, you know, I'm showing them how it's supposed to be done. I'm going to make sure we're putting on roofs every day. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, it's like, I'm doing the best I can, but I can also feel the ceiling I'm hitting. You know, mm -hmm. and and I remember sitting at my desk. This is that we just moved into this new office space, just dumped about eighty grand cash into the build out of it, which was a whole, whole, whole lot of money at that time. And you know, it's like I could feel the ceiling I'm hitting, and I laid it out like, man, if I play my cards right, I can retire, and I'll have the option to retire in the next five to seven years. And the very next thing that popped in my mind was like, but bitch, you're the only one that's going to be able to retire, mm -hmm. and like, and I just wasn't okay with that, and like, I don't know. How I guess like, okay. How do I build a machine that anybody that wants to can retire off of this, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I truly believe like in order to keep something, you got to learn to give it away, mm -hmm. you know. And so I like I I remember this is at the same time I started working with a professional coach, and by the name of Mike Code. Mike Code was great, man. I love that dude. And you know our our first couple conversations, you know, he, he said, well, you know, Brandon, you know, first he asked me how's your culture. And I was like, well, it's okay, but so-and-so's got it a little messed up. And he's mm -hmm. like, well, I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. And he said, Brandon, culture's only what you tolerate. And that was like a gut punch for me at the time. Like, so like, damn, this is all on me, mm -hmm. you know? And um, then, you know, he's like, I want you to write down and dial in exactly what you're looking for in a teammate and get rid of everything that's not that. Damn. And that's exactly what I did. And that was, it was super scary. And he's also, he's like, I also want you to remove yourself from the field and you got to start showing, transition yourself out of the field and you got to start showing people how to sell like you sell and, and service people how you service people, you know? And that's, uh, so that was super scary at that time. But I knew it's like, man, this is, I know I'm not okay here. Like this isn't where, this isn't the end, like where we plateau at. And, and this is, I'm just going to buy all into this. Even if it doesn't make sense, it's scary. It's all those things. And as soon as I just stepped out and, and had that leap of faith and that trust, mm -hmm. it was like the floodgates opened up, you know, but it took a lot. When I say the floodgates opened up, like, okay, here's one, there's two. I'm hiring five and firing four type of a thing, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a constant vetting process. And, and that's the thing is like, man, everybody, like we talk about having these high standards, this, that, and the other. It's like, okay, but are we really standing on that? You know? Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, that's, I, I feel like a lot of people aren't. And I, I know I wasn't for the first couple of years. It sounded good and I was trying to, but I had a high tolerance. And it's like, I feel like we can either have a, uh, a high tolerance and a culture that's mediocre at best mm -hmm. or a low tolerance and a culture of exception. We, if we just have the willingness to hold that line. And it, that's man, the way. what's that? I said, that's the way. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that took, it, it just, Every year, there's just been multiple learning and like failing my way forward. Um, and today, it's like, I mean, we have an amazing team, amazing culture, and it's like a magnet, magnet for high quality people. But it's like, it took a long time building that momentum up to that. And mm -hmm. I'm sure I, you know something about that. Um, but it's like, 
I don't know, for me, like the, the, I constantly keep the mindset of the new guy, like I was saying earlier. It doesn't matter what level I'm on, you know? You know, it's like we, this year, you know, we're targeted at 60 million and that we're, we're right on track to do that. And it's like, people will be like, oh man, you got to figure it out the fuck I do. I'm the new guy on this level. Like, I got to be more coachable. I got to yeah. ask more questions. I, I got to outwork these people. I got to keep that desperation and I got something to prove, you know? But I think a lot of people, it's like, they get to a point where way early in the game, it's like, like they've arrived somewhere, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, oh, I made it. I'm they good. Start making money, Get right? The house, the cars, everything they want, right? And that's like going back to when I sat at my desk that day and it's like, man, how do I get other people to be able to retire on that? That's the that's the the moment it stopped being about me, you know. And once it stopped being about me, like that's when we really been, began to like grow and scale like at an alarming rate. That's crazy, yeah. And uh, how many people do you have in your company right now? We're like like. We're at like 32 uh, can sales consultants, um, 53-ish uh, W-2, and I mean, we're probably... So it's a pretty good-sized team. Like about 300 to uh, 99s. So if somebody wants to join your company, obviously, like, you're a mentor, you're a coach. I ask, like, how you treat your team, and you're like, dude, they're like my kids. Um, you know, anybody, doesn't matter your age. Right. I just want to make them better. I want to stretch them. I want to positively peer pressure them to become the best version of themselves. I want to help them make a lot of money. But, you know, you, you see obstacles and they're nothing for you. Right. So when you see people, you know where you came from and people that literally like want more, like, you know, the blueprint, how to get there. Yeah. So you got the great organization. You got the great company. Um, if somebody's watching this, right, because your story, like I told you guys, like when you meet him, his story is super crazy. You talk about, you know, being incarcerated at 13 years old, right? Like, that's pretty crazy. And then, you know, you said you were an entrepreneur drug dealer, right? Yeah. Which means you were trying to do something that was bad, but for, do it as good as you could. Right. Right. You were trying to turn that into a business only because the devil sold you a lie and you believed it. I believed it. A lot of us believed it before. A lot of people are watching this right now. They think they're stuck. They're not stuck. They're just a couple decisions away from changing their life. And, um, Podcasts like this, sh testimonies, really this is a testimony is what it is, but testimonies like this show that those that, you know, have the worst things done create the biggest testimonies, mm -hmm. right? They create the biggest impact because the world loves seeing, you know, it's like the movie Rocky. It's like, you know, and, and that's what you have. And, and by the way, I mean, you just got out of jail six years ago, which is really crazy, you know? Um, that's just a short amount of time. Yeah. And yeah. the cool thing is, is that knowing that the first... 32 years of your life were pretty freaking crazy. Terrible. <laughs> and so six good, 32 crazy. Yeah. It's like you're learning so fast now. Yeah. And now everything that you're learning, you can teach anybody how to get their life there quick. As long as they want it. Because right. you, like you said, like, you know, wanting to invest in the wrong people doesn't matter. And the wrong people are me that don't want it. Right. If they don't want to grow, if they don't want to change, you're just talking to someone who just doesn't care. And we don't want to talk to people who don't care. So if there's people that are watching this, a lot of guys in your company make really good money. Yeah. Um, and they have the ability to really build a big life, a big future. And, you know, he lives in St. Louis. Yep. And you're building branches all around the United States, but really in the Midwest right now is really where you are, and especially in St. Louis. If somebody wants to reach out to you, if, if you've, like, inspired somebody, they want to reach out to you, um, or they're like, dude, I want to work with this guy. Like you provide really good opportunities. When I, when I had my opportunity, which is what I'm doing now, um, I let the world know, Hey, I'm looking for guys that are like this, like this, yeah. like this, and like this. Right. Um, two things. What are you looking for in your company? Right? Like, who do you want to surround yourself with? I'd like for you to name that. If anybody can feel that, um, how do they reach out to you to, to, to work for you, to apply, to, to be close to you? Because a lot of people right now, I mean, everybody should be able to resonate with, when you said I didn't, you know, like I was lost, like I didn't see myself doing anything great. A lot of people can't see that. Right. But when you can see what's capable for them, they'll get close to you because you can see the path for them. And you're so successful now and you're doing so well. And from where you came from, like, I just want all these people that are watching that are ready for a change. If someone's really like, dude, that Brandon guy, I want that guy to freaking, I, I, I want to be with that guy. Like, I'm working for my boss right now, and my boss sucks. Yeah. So, like, I want that guy. 
I want to be with that guy. I'm going to go work my ass off for that guy. Because there's a lot of people that are working for the wrong companies and they're working as hard as they're working. If they were working for you, they'd have a whole different life. For but sure. they're just giving it to the wrong person. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you do the right thing at the wrong time, it doesn't matter. So if you do the right thing at the right time, shit works. And right now, your company's growing like crazy, and you're looking for these players. What, what does that mean? What, like, who are you looking for if somebody's watching this? Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. inspired everybody to change. <laughs> but, like, if somebody wanted to join you. Yeah, if somebody, would, like, wanted to join our team, first and foremost, I always say, like, if somebody's not at a place in life where it's like, man, I'm not fulfilled. I don't feel like I'm the vehicle I'm with is serving me well. I don't feel like they're loyal to me, and, and I'm not, like, I'm not, all my boxes aren't checked and I want more and I'm willing to do whatever that takes. You know, I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better wife. I want to get my fitness together. I want to develop myself into a better version of myself. If somebody's not at that point, it's definitely not going to be a fit. But if somebody is at that point and truly willing to do whatever that takes, mm -hmm. like it, we have an insanely good vehicle where it's, it's not just life-changing money, it's life-changing opportunity. I always say, I don't want somebody's bank account to just get better. I want somebody's whole life to get better. I, you know, I want your relationships to get better. I want you to get that investment portfolio built up. I want you to set that foundation for your family and your kids and for your future family and change the whole directory of them. Mm -hmm. And so that's the opportunity that we offer for the people that are willing to go all in. And if somebody is at that point, Man, hit us up, Brandon J. Roofing, on any of Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you can hit me up, Brandon James, uh, on Facebook or Insta. Um, you can also go to our website, uh, brandonjroofing.com. There's a form fill that you uh, can put in there, and it'll go directly to our sales team. And we're, we're constantly looking for high-quality people to partner up with and, and just change more lives, man. What are the qualities of the guys that are, or the gals that are doing really good in your company, killing it? Guys making you know, six, seven figures, what are they doing? I'd say the first, the, the number one quality is, is there, there's, no, there's nothing special about any of them, but knowing how not special they are. Knowing they have to put in more work, they have to stay more coachable, they have to stay more humble, they have to do the things, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that's it. like, man, I always say if somebody's coachable and willing and they join our company without a shadow of a doubt, they'll be successful. But it's like the people that come in thinking they're special and that, oh, I, like looking for the easier, softer way. It's like we have the blueprint. We have the roadmap. We have the foundation as the company mm -hmm. that anybody who just grabs hold of that, it's like we're a rocket ship, honestly. And you it's just like, got to be hungry. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and I, I, I can tell by your demeanor that the success that you have right now, like literally you're very aware that like everything could go away tomorrow. Everything that's important to you, you have to earn to keep it. Every day. If you want your wife's love, you got to earn to keep it. You know, if you want your employees to be loyal to you at your team, you got to earn it to keep it. If you want to make money, you got to earn it to keep it. If you want that mindset you have right now, that badass mindset that everybody's like, man, I want his mindset. You got to earn it to keep it. Every day. You know, when you were on that binge and you were talking about like, dude, I'm going to kill myself, right? Like, like that mindset, like. That was all a lie. That was trash. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not. There's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. That wasn't God. That was... That was the devil trying to convince you that you weren't, weren't, weren't worth it. And I've learned that the devil only attacks what's valuable. Hmm. So, like, he hits you your whole life. And then God's like, all right, I'm going to take him from here. Yeah. And it's still a choice, though. For sure. Right? There's still, there's still traps every because day. Because that itch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that itch to win is what you're on. 
And I love it, man. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people right now, if you're addicted to being lazy, you can be addicted to winning. For sure. Right? And turn ourselves into whatever we want to. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Yeah. Um, guys, everybody, super important. Um, this is an opportunity. Two things. Number one, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what your life looks like. I don't care who doesn't believe in you. Um, you know, you saw him get emotional and get kind of teary-eyed when he talked about his girl, which is, was his girlfriend then, which is his wife now. Um, when someone believes in you, you don't let them down. Like, he said, I never had anyone believe in me. You know, like, I've had people that love me, maybe your mom, your dad, they loved you, but when she was like, dude, you're capable of whatever, let's go get this. You're like, oh, okay, cool. I would say, like, and, and this is a, an analogy that I can see that he relates to, but some people, and I don't think they run as fast as direction, they're trying to run towards a life they want. They're like, oh, I want the cars, I want the house, I want this money, I want that. And, you know, that doesn't really motivate me. You know what? Running from a life that I hate motivates the shit out of me. <laughs> so, like, if I was like, hey, there's all this money, go get it. And then over here, it was like, hey, dude, this is your old life. Look at it. And you're like... No ways. That ain't me. And then, boom, you take off running because you're like, that ain't me. I ain't, that ain't me. And so I'm running from a life that I hated. Um, there's people that you want to prove wrong, like bet against me, right? And then I'll, I'll show you who's fucking right. There's that bet against me attitude, which is proving people wrong. But then there's like that one person, or maybe you have a couple if you're lucky, but, you know, I had one person. Mine was my wife. And it's like, I'm not going to I'm, I'm not gonna prove her wrong. Like, she's right. I am worthy. I am capable. She believed in me. I'm not going to let her down. And so, like, I want to prove everybody wrong who didn't believe in me. But then the one person who believed in me, I want to prove them right. Brandon just told you guys that everyone is qualified, okay? All you have to do is say, hey, you know, like, you know, like there's no difference in me and him and everyone else. We're all the same. It's just how bad do we want it? Do we really want to change? He said something like when the pain overrides, like the fear of change, people change. Like when the pain gets so high, well, that girl that introduced you to those people yeah. in that 12-step program or yeah. whatever it was, you know, she's like, well, I'll introduce you one day when the pain gets so heavy where you're finally like, all right, I'm sick of this. Right. And you're like, all right, it's there. Yeah. I'm there. Maybe you're feeling that. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a drug addiction. It doesn't have to be that you're a criminal. Criminal. By the way, those are just pro pro products of the wrong people. Um, those products of the wrong environment. Maybe um, wanting to feel accepted or belong to something and you just don't know where you belong. So you just attach to the easiest one to get into. You know, or, or maybe just feeling like you're important or getting attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, but whenever... Uh, she was like, hey, you know, if, if the pain's high enough, like, there's this thing. Well, maybe your thing is being average. Like, maybe you're just sick of being average. Like, dude, I don't have a drug addiction. Like, I don't, yeah, but you're average. And you're like, I don't want to be average no more. So maybe that's your pain. Maybe you're comfortable. Maybe that's your pain. Because you're like, dude, like, you're not going to change your bloodline. Like, your family will never be changed because of you. You changed your bloodline. Like, you broke your bloodline. I think so. Yeah, I know you did. And no one ever thought you were going to be the bloodline breaker. Right. But the fact that it was you, it shows that anyone can be a comeback kid, which is what we were talking about in the car. Everyone can be an overcomer. And he talked about God is the foundation of his life. In the Bible, um, Saul, who was a Christian killer, turned into Apostle Paul, who took the Bible the furthest. And not to get religious, but like the old is gone, the new has come. Maybe some of you guys, like you said, you're ready. You want to be elite in your fitness. You want to be elite in like giving all you got and emptying the tank every day. You want to build a family that's, you know, that you're, you're the leader of it. You want to put a financial fence around your family and actually make some money and be a good person. You have to be in a good organization. You have to be around a good leader. If you're not around a good leader, you're never going to become it. It just won't happen. Um, you know, you just took everything you did wrong in your life. And I think you just finally flipped it. Mm -hmm. And then you started doing the opposite and you took your addiction for all these things. And then you drove that into business. You know, um, I love how honest people are who are successful and self-made and they tell all the ugly because we're in a society right now where like literally every time someone's successful, all they want to do is throw up what they did in the past and like say, well, that's well. I th see. I bet you didn't know that about them. You know what I'll tell you? We're in a generation right now where there's a lot of broken people. And there's a lot of people afraid to come out because they're labeled. They think that, you know, they can't become something. And, like, his story should inspire every single one of you to totally change your life right now. 
And I'd watch this 50 times. And by the way, if you watched it and you're like, dude, this is inspiring. Maybe there's a buddy that you need to send this video to. And you just say, hey, you need to check this Brandon guy out. Like, this is crazy. And so if he can do it, you guys can do it. And, you know, I'm not sure, like, I'm sure you hire people that, like, don't have all these problems and all these things. They have really good families. And they're like, I just want to show my family, thank you for raising me right. And I want to work from a great guy like you. Absolutely. And plug into a really good culture. So maybe that's your deal, you know. Um, There's just not very many people that are hungry in the world anymore. And when you put yourself around these people, you're just not going to go anywhere, okay? So you guys are meeting my good buddy Brandon right now. He's a badass. His story is absolutely inspiring. Make sure you message him on Instagram. Make sure you hit him up on Facebook. Um, And then lastly, if you're looking for a really cool opportunity, you know, I have a sales channel, okay? He's in the roofing industry. They sell roofs. It's pretty simple. And, Super simple. And, and you're, not, you're not begging people to buy a roof. Like, people need roofs. They have houses. Everyone has a house. It's a very simple system. You just got to be a good person. And you got to become a, a great person. That's it. And then all these things just work out. And so he has a company. If you're wanting to join, you guys can join. It's not about this. I told him I wanted to share a story today. But I have people that reach out to me every day. And what I hear them say is, Andy, I'm taking all your advice. I'm, I'm trying to change. But my, my company I work for doesn't work like that. And, and when they say self-development, they're like, oh, quit watching that shit and get back to work. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like that shit changed your life and that shit is this and that shit is real. And your brain, it, your mind, it's your responsibility. Your, your greatest responsibility is to be in control of your own thoughts. And once you took control of your mind, your whole life shifted. So if you want to join an organization, okay, like Brandon's, this is your chance. And if you're in a good place right now, and you're watching his deal, just remember, maybe the next time that str- somebody's struggling in your company or something, right, you know, maybe they could be the voice to turn someone around also. They could become a good leader. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. You know, to end it out, what's something you want to you, you wanna say? One last message. Maybe somebody that doesn't believe in themselves, somebody that's, you know, like you were on the park bench, right? You said, well, yeah. I, I, hell, I couldn't even be a good criminal. Right. You know, hell, I couldn't, be the, I couldn't do this. You know, I was trying all these things. But then you, you finally decide to come over and do it right. Bam. Yeah. One thing that I would say is, is we are the only ones that bind us to our past. It's, oh, we, we tell ourselves, I, I, I can't do this because of this I did. I can't do this because, you know, whatever the thing is, you know, we're not that person any longer. And nobody else is binding you to our past. You to, nobody else is binding you to your past. We are the only ones that bind us to our past. And so that was a big thing for me to, to come to. Um, we just got to know we're worth it, man, and put in the work day in and day out. And it's that's as as we're continuously putting in that work, man. We start believing that like this is truly possible. So you start to build your value. Absolutely, I love it, man. Well, yeah, I appreciate you, you, brother. Yeah, I love you, bro. Hey, everybody, have a kick-ass day. You guys crush it and kill it. Make sure you give Brandon uh, a reach out on Instagram or Facebook if you guys need something. If you're looking for a killer opportunity, he gave you the website. And by the way. Share this video with somebody you know that's going through a hard time that you're like, dude, this is your time to come back, okay? Love you guys. Kill it. We'll see you in the next podcast. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.